Today I'm going to look at a feed horn LMB. So I've got this one here. So typically the LMBs I've used before, and I'll show you an example of my CKU band LMB looked like this, a C band and a KU band LMB. And it has like, a, I'll try to show you what it looks like on the inside. Yeah, so you can see inside the LMB there, and you can see the, um, the, the little antennas. That it, and you can see one on one side, one on the other. That's the vertical and horizontal uh, for your satellite feed. <laughs> Sometimes you can get it wrong and do a blind scan if you have it upside down, and then it will it'll scan in the vertical transponders uh, as a horizontal. So you want to be careful of that with one of these LMBs. So, okay, I'm new to I'm new to one of these LMBs. I'm just gonna pop the cap off here. There you go. Uh, okay, so this doesn't have a plate in it. Okay, good. So there's a look on the inside of it. So you can see the antenna there and also on this uh, side right here, you can see the other antenna that would reflect. So one side will be horizontal and the other side will be vertical. And the LMB, and basically it's sending the signal to one of these LMBs here. They're called Echo Star C band LMBs. Now these only do um, the one side. So this, each LMB will do its own, will independently handle vertical or horizontal. So essentially this is like two LMBs built into one and they're attached here. You can detach them. I'm not gonna detach these. For some, and this is what a lot of professional broadcast repeaters will use for an LMB. Now some that don't have the feed horn like this will look like this and it'll have one of these uh, LMB blocks uh, connected to the back of it, like that. But when you're out running one of these, you'll notice that there's two um, RG6 F connector ports to it. So each side will have its own F connector port. That's where, I'll show you the switch. You have to get one of these switches. These are a LMBV is 13 slash 14 V and LMBH is 17 slash 18 V So that's how you switch your polarity. So it looks like a 22k switch or a dissect switch It looks like a splitter, but it's not a splitter <laughs> It is a switch so you send your main Connection which will run to your receiver there and then you run two different uh, connections there of little pieces of cable I got the little pieces of cable right here. I just made these up today and I just took um, uh, some uh, screw on F connectors and I put a little bit of black electrical tape uh, just to cover up the um, the insulation part that comes back and I just fold that back tape it up I don't cut it because it makes a mess <laughs> I just put it underneath here and it makes it hold a lot better in my experience so you put one of these on there and then you run it to your LMB and then the one thing you'll have to do is your receiver will have to be set up to uh, read one of these switches so you have to go into your receiver switch, uh, settings and have uh, uh, your uh, um, 17, 18 volt settings. So you can get these at Tech 2000. And uh, yeah, there's there's that part there. I don't know what that does. Um, might be for the motor. This is not motorized like the old satellite dishes where the old um, LMBs <laughs> had a motor switch between them. And I think what eventually they went to is uh, one of these switches. And there's a whole lot of ways of doing it in the old school way, which sometimes still is done with professional C-band uh, earth station reflector setups. So I'm it's, it's a little bit heavier. Like this is, you know, some hard steel metal there. And so, but I'm excited to uh, put this thing on and uh, seeing what we can get with All right, it. So I put, so the feed, for, feed horn is up on the dish and I'm, Climb the ladder here. So I drew a little line where I found the place where I was getting the first signal and then kind of just tweaked it a little bit to get the most optimum. So I have like the uh, vertical LMB would be up here. That's the vertical and this is the horizontal. Better um, 
twist on connectors. I just got some cheap ones from the from the thrift store. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's my setup for this uh, um, feed horn, uh, which uh, has two different LMBs. You got the switch here. So this switch here is a uh, 13 volt and an, uh 17, 18 volt switch. So what that does is basically what I found out is there's not much configuring I had to do. It just makes this work like any other LMB because every other LMB will have this these uh, built right into it. This one it's a little bit higher, uh, heavier duty, so it's a, you're able to get uh, its own particular LMB per, for the vertical uh, for the vertical side and its own LMB for the horizontal. Now most LMBs will just have like all this, all this will be built right into it. This is kind of an old school and it's also how a lot of the professional setups. Like that. That way uh, just keeps the rain off of it. I can't put the cylinder apart that holds it securely so I just hold it that way. But the wires, I got so many wires here, it helps, uh, uh, the wires help hold this into place. But I think the smart thing to do would probably be to take a, a wire or string and just tie it there to secure it so it doesn't blow off in the wind. This is a dual output orthogonal C-band feed used for simulasis reception of vertical and horizontal microwaves. It separates the vertical and horizontal polarities and conducts them in their own rectangular wave guides. It uses Gardner or Norsat LMBs sold separately at the waveguide openings. This feed form is set up typically used by cable head ends to allow switching of both polarities and multiple decoder receivers. You can also use it on a signal receiver home satellite setup by using a two times one voltage switch sold separately. Another thing I wanted to show you is this LMB. So this LMB here, you can uh, this will come off, you can pop that part off. And this is for, if you have a C-band dish and you just want to use it for KU-band, this is a high gain prime focus KU LMB. So this LMB will work a lot better than the LMBs uh, that even one of these LMBs. I mean, I've had success with KU-band on a big dish with this LMB, but this will work a lot better for those weaker to receive uh, KU-band. But you have to have it right in the spot and then the problem I'm finding with that unless someone can let me know I haven't done enough research on this yet but I can't run these two LMBs at the same time which I'd like to do but I think with the KU band be able to get KU band I'd have to have uh, I wouldn't be able to have this LMB up at the same time and I really want C band because a lot of the programming that I want to watch is on C band this is the correct feed horn needed to illuminate a prime focus dish. As opposed to an offset dish, many hobbyists complain that they can't get good KU results with a C-KU combo feed. This is because th that feed is not designed to efficiently illuminate the, a prime focus dish. Also, some people use offset feeds on their big prime focus dishes, but again, the illum illumination pattern will be wrong because of the FD mismatch, and they will get poor results. The correct feed horn to use is the one here. It is matched for FD equal 0.4. It has several layers of scalars to create a broad illumination pattern to utilize the entire surface, surface of the prime focus reflector. This is the key to getting excellent KU signal reception. You just have to make sure you get the feed position in at the phase center of the reflector. The only way to do this is by hand. It will be very near the focal point, but you do have to experiment, unfortunately. These feeds are designed for three strut antennas, whereas your mesh dish has four struts. You may have to improvise to get it attached. Are you looking for a satellite dish, a satellite receiver, or a actuator, or a satellite meter, or an LMB, or any satellite products for your free to air setup, go to tech2000.com. Look at their wide variety of merchandise of many free to air satellite products that will soothe your satellite needs.
minutes. Now that we have the feed horn attached, I will do a test here on 127 West and just see if NASA and Reels will all scan in. Being one of the satellites I've been watching a lot, Reels is actually an interesting channel. <laughs> know that Ortho is more of for commercial head-end applications. The idea is to separate the polarizations and guide them to their own waveguides. This cuts down on cross polarization interference. Generally, you get a clear signal. The signal ortho mode feed is used by TV radio stations that need just a single polarization. In this case, they will get the maximum signal to noise ratio because there is only one microwave polarization bouncing around inside the feed. Also, I'd like to thank you for watching this video and please, if you've uh, used one of these, let me know in the comments or if you've been experiencing any interference with your C-band LMBs, let me know. And also please come to my site, freesatellitetv.net, which is a Facebook page at this time, just where you can find newbie noob information for setting up free to air stuff. Please give this video a like, share and subscribe. And thank you kindly for watching. Facebook group, North American uh, over the air streaming. Uh, please, uh, if, you're inter if you're in North America, you're interested in uh, satellite TV, um, you can hook up with us there.